what's going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here with a video here today bringing us a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool, whatever the title is, probably like something with text or regardless, clean or quick and whatever, you guys know the whole drill. Uh, today's video is actually inspired by a guy named Mario. I went through his uh, portfolio and I just saw this really cool little concept. I was like, I can make this look kind of cool too and like my own little way. So I think it's going to be a fun little concept for you guys to do very quickly. It's like almost like a magazine-esque just abstract feel to it. Um, overall, I think you guys are like it a lot. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's just get this thing going right here, right now. And I'm currently editing next week's video. And let me say, bro, you, you, I don't let this flop. You ever seen like the whole TikTok thing? Yo, don't let this flop, okay? Please, all right? So the, just worry about next week. It's gonna be freaking great. And uh, yeah, just like enjoy today's video. Let's go. All right, guys, let's go get this thing going right here, right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide my example I have going on here. And uh, basically the whole cool part about this is being as clean and simple as it is. Um, it should be one of those things where if whatever font you end up using also sets a bit of a vibe or a mood to the banner itself. So be mindful about just using any font that you guys kind of want, but I'm gonna be using a very simple clean font known as, of course, uh, Gotham Black. And I'm gonna go ahead put minute there and I'm also gonna put banner in here as well as a nice small little subtext I know it's like backwards but let's not care about that right now because you know it doesn't really matter um so basically right I'm gonna have this kind of be centered nice and centered right about there so the cool part of this it's as simple as just honestly taking the same name and or whatever kind of like uh heading font you kind of have going on here and just placing it I also get the color here in the uh, background so we're gonna do next is of course take the the word minute i'm gonna hold alt right my keyboard then i'm gonna drag the the word minute right below the same word of course right so you get basically a copy right below it and i'm gonna go ahead and press Control t to free transform and make this a little bit bigger right about here and i'm just gonna make uh, duplicates by also holding alt again and also holding shift and then moving it over to the right i'll make a nice straight line duplicate for myself and uh, i'm gonna go ahead now and change this color to the nice secondary color that i have going on for myself which is a nice little pink and uh, also when it comes to these, uh, I guess the secondary copies is going to be like a full color in pink or whatever color you guys end up choosing, right? And then the one over here on the right hand side, the other duplicate is going to basically have your uh, fill, drop it all the way down to zero, double click to open this up for the layer styles. We're going to go to where it says stroke and we're also going to go to where it says the color. We're going to choose the same color. You can choose an opposite color, like a different color or a complementary color, but I'm just going to be using the same color. I'm gonna take my size, put this around like three or four. I would say four is a pretty good number and also my positions on the inside. And once I have that, I press okay. Now what I have here is basically like the two little copies here I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have both of them be selected. So either just go over here, right? Click on one, hold control, click on the other, hold alt, drag it down just like so, and then kind of just offset it. So I'm gonna put the actual stroke one over here and the other one over here. That's just, Hold on. Okay, so you know what I meant. We're gonna put one over here, right? I just I got super lost. I was like, wait, I didn't move it. <laughs> oh, got this. Okay, we're gonna put the other one. Please help me. Like, just go on the other side. Please. I don't even know where it is. Okay, right? We're gonna offset them. That way, we have a fill on one side and a stroke on the other side. And basically, you do this another time if you guys want. I think I only did it twice, realistically, for the uh, example that I have going on here. I did do it three times. So basically, I'm gonna have three. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. Move this up a little bit and we're gonna take the copy of these first two up here nope these two up here and just drag this down now we have three copies all offset and looking really good and uh, i'm gonna go ahead now and click on all these by clicking on the first layer clicking on every layer in between by also just clicking shift on my keyboard and click on the layer on the bottom just like so then i can press Control t on all these right free transform them and give these a nice cool angle to them Right, you kind of almost already see the kind of uh, like magazine like vibes going on here. So right when I have here, I want to make it a little bit smaller because I want to leave space for a bit of a white uh, wording over here. And uh, right, right about here is pretty good for me. I think there's a nice cool style to it. And uh, even right about here is where you can honestly stop and go ahead and put more effort into a different kind of uh, element where there's just like adding cool shapes and whatnot. Um, but for me, I'm going to continue doing what I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these, hold alt, drag it over here. Right, I'm gonna fill this in with white on this sides over here, right? So just add a little more of a color tone going on here. That looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie to you. And uh, okay, so compared to this, we have pretty much everything going on. And uh, to kind of finish this whole thing off, we're gonna also apply a bit of, so I'm gonna find all the strokes. So this is a stroke one, this is a stroke one, and this is a stroke one. I'm gonna put these all together actually now at this point, right? Then what I'm gonna end up doing is all the stroke options, I'm gonna basically hover over these, Right, I want to make a duplicate of it. So when I have them all selected, I press Control J on my keyboard, 
Then control E to merge it all together. Control J will make a duplicate. Control E will merge it all together. Now we have one single layer with all of our nice little cool uh, kind of uh, stroke options on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make this pure black. Now the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna press Control U on my keyboard to bring up the hue and saturation, or you can double click, use your layer styles and go to color overlay and put it on black. I just like to do this really quick thing to do is you press Control U on your keyboard, it brings up the hue and saturation table. You take your lightness, throw it down to negative 100, and it will make it black. So now we have a nice little simple black stroke here. I wanna make sure this is also below all of my strokes. So I'm gonna make sure I do that as well. And uh, I'm gonna go to where it says filter, blur, motion blur and i'm also going to kind of find the angle so you can actually see over here in this little side over here like where the end like the top of the end meets and uh where our black kind of like uh line is going if you guys want to like kind of slowly start turning your uh or just simply taking your right your mouse and kind of going up and down on this right here right your scroll wheel and just kind of saying where it gets like a perfect straight line in comparison to where this is and i think right about this eight angle is a pretty good like that's a pretty good indication that's like actually perfectly on the line so now what I can do is I can use a layer mask. What layer mask is, if I use a brush, like I'm going to, a soft brush, bl uh, basically black will erase, and when I change this color to white, it will fill in, right? So I'm gonna basically use black, and I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and kind of just erase a little bit of these edges where it's a little bit too much, right? I don't really want it inside of the letter. I kind of just want it to kind of float on the outsides of the actual canvas a little bit. When it comes to the, I'm not canvas, but like the outsides of the stroke um, that you got going on here, right? Just add a little bit more of a, I guess quoted to the actual picture and whatnot. So I think right about here looks pretty good. And uh, the fun part just simply comes by adding your other layer. And also for the background, if you wanna change your color around, what I ended up doing was this, right? I made a new layer, had a soft brush here. I used the same background color, but I went to click back into the foreground picker or the uh, color picker, right? Move my hue a little bit farther up and this a little bit towards the left, press okay. Now at a fairly big brush, I'm gonna use a pretty big diameter, click once in the middle. Okay, now with this little once in the middle click, I'm also gonna put it on either a linear dodge add, but I think for this case, I, I think I picked a pretty, also freaking, what is that dissolve? It's almost like if I add noise to this background, that would also look fire. Um, the, okay, pay attention. Uh, but however, I actually might actually leave it on normal because I think the color that I chose is a very good blending color where you can kind of see the color going on in the background. And uh, what I've been doing recently is I press control T and uh, besides just leaving like a very simple middle or an obvious middle focus, I like to just press control T. It's currently free transform. You can see on the outside. If I right click and do warp and just take this and kind of warp this very oddly, right? You get a more dramatic and kind of abstract uh, lighting. Um, that also gives a little more of like a, like a randomness to it. And I kind of like how this looks. I've been doing this a bit recently. If you guys want to as well, you take a soft eraser and erase around a little bit if you guys don't like certain spots. But for me, I think it looks super freaking sick uh, where like the lighting is now. It almost feels more natural. Okay. So now what comes is honestly just adding in a black or even going over here, by the way, making it a little more lighter. I added a brightness and contrast. Put my contrast up, put my brightness up, make it a little more yellow. Okay. For the background, at least. And what I ended up doing is make a new layer right above that brightness and contrast. We're gonna go ahead and just simply say, hey, we want a black, uh, just like literally just a black shape right here, right? And where this is starting to go is where you kind of uh, apply a bit of foreground, background, almost like a middle ground area. So what I actually wanted, to, I wanna show you guys this first, right? So I have my logo here. What I actually did first was I took a copy of my logo and then went and put it below everything besides the, uh, right above the, of course, the background itself. I just kind of made my logo really, really big. And then even just this had this really cool element where you guys see, obviously the text itself is in the foreground, right? Then you have the actual stroke layers right in the mid ground. And then you have this nice black shapes in the background. Um, I thought that looked super, super sick. So that's why I ended up adding just a random black shape, right? And then saying, I want my logo to just kind of sit in that kind of like in that area for that black shape to also still play with the foreground, the background, the whole mid ground kind of thing going on here. Now, what I also ended up doing was saying, hey, I, maybe I don't want the actual everything to be in front of the black plate. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the white, throw this below it, right, right below it. I even throw this actual stroke option right below it as well. Throw that one right below it, right? You can play with that if you guys want to as well. Um, I, I will just leave it like that for now. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of a difference, right? And also I'm gonna add a very simple drop shadow to this right here. So for this simple drop shadow, we're gonna actually click on the yellow and ma basically manually pick a darker color, which is si simply taking this hue bar, taking it, dragging it down, taking this, also dragging it a little bit further down as well, 
Take our spread, lower this down, our size, bring this a little bit up, distance a little bit there, and then lower the opacity just a little bit. Give ourselves a nice, simple drop shadow on that as well. And then what I end up doing as well is say, hey, let's add a new layer, take a marquee tool, click and hover over the word banner, make this black, right? Just like that. If I wanna add a little bit more as well, I can add like a, almost like a cool little uh, secondary shape here, right? Right below this, be like, I wanna put it here, but I don't think that looks good. I'm actually gonna say X that, I'm gonna say no. Um, but basically, right? I'll add the word minute again. So what I ended up doing was since if you don't have a logo, what I ended up doing was this for you guys. Just take the same duplicate of one of these like minutes, make one black, make it a little bit bigger, right? Throw that in the background here, throw that in the background here. It's a little bit noisy here. I think I should put this stuff back in front uh, of the actual thing, right? I think because it's a little bit like too, too uh, <clears throat> noisy going on if I leave the black shape just like right there. Where is the white? There we go. Put that above, right? And then we'll go back and say, hey, that black shape over here. I wanna make it maybe even a little smaller. Uh, oh, I ended up using a different one. I actually used uh, not Gotham black, but I used Gotham, where is it? Gotham. I believe I used one that was italicized, so black italic, right? Then I took this and was like, hey, I wanna put this over here, put this over here, right? Just to add a little bit of that black in there as well. And then overall, I think we're pretty much done, but you get this really fun, just like chaotic also yet, just it's it says the same word. So there's no way you can't really read it kind of scenario going on here. And I think it was a pretty fun little uh, abstract design. So honestly, I think we're pretty much done. And I think it just looks super, super freaking cool. I mean, honestly, going back in and like saying, if you want to change different colors, all you have to do is just basically manually select all these different options again and be like, hey, I want it to be a different color. Right, you can mess around with that. You can even go even grayscale. Um, this is actually a lot I think you can do with this. And it's just one of those fun things. That it's just, it's not hard. It's also fun to mess around with. And you get a really cool concept at the end. Um, with that being said, though, we're basically, basically done. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys so very much. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. It's just a very fun, just also very quick, uh, kind of like sporadic, like I said, magazine kind of feel. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. I said it like three times already. We're just going to get over it and be like, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Set so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. And uh, most likely 275 likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will be the PSD that you guys have here today and change out the words and all that cool stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. Love you guys. Peace. Oh, wait. Before you go, I almost forgot one other thing. Um, when it comes to like, I don't, that's like the most funnest part of the part, entire thing. Uh, when it comes to like actually adding textures in here, it's a really cool thing you can do if you guys actually take the ones that have color in them. Um, whether or not if you want to have a color, have like a cool seamless kind of transparent texture above like the cool little color you actually chose. Excuse me. Um, also one thing, if you didn't want to make it super chaotic and just kind of press control T on all the stuff in the background and basically make it a little bit more bigger, right? I kind of want to make it a little less, uh, kind of like sporadic and stuff. But one thing's for sure, if you guys actually take, let's just say we take the uh, stuff right here, all the colored ones, right? I actually make a duplicate of them and then kind of merge them together, just like so. Now they have like basically uh, everything in one layer, right? I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna press control V because I already have one pasted in here. Nice little kind of like random crumpled texture. But if you wanna put a texture in here, it can look freaking dope as well. Set a different kind of vibe. Also just putting on a nice little gradient map in here as well. Let's just use like, Something like this would be freaking cool. You know what I mean? Like you can have a lot of fun just choosing different like individual ones. Even that kind of black and white looks kind of sick, honestly. Right? So keep in mind, adding texture as well is also another element that it kind of makes it more abstract and fun. Um, yeah, forgot to add that, but now you guys know. Now you guys can do it. And I'll tell you guys in a second, or not really in a second, but next week. Love you guys.